Hey guys, so then I, I am making a bit of a video about uh, being a Neanderthal and how it is and how things have been. So in terms of conversion, my process is a bit stalled because I have no finances to move to Israel and uh, or Belmonte. And there are uh, different groups that help Anusim. Some say they help us do return. Others say they help us convert. The reality is it's hard to live in a Jewish community in Portugal. And it's hard mainly to get help in a pandemic. Now, there is a group that is currently helping me and uh, so I, th I think there will be some progress and I hope it is what I expect it to be but I'm not going to say a lot of details because um, there are still a lot of personal things and the main reason I'm doing this video is because I'm doing an essay about my life, about my experience, so that I can um, talk to the organization, uh, which I'm not going to refer to right now because I still am not as familiar as I am with the other organizations. Um, so essentially, I think I'm going to tell my story a bit. Um, since I was a little girl, I always rejected Christianity for the most part, even though it was forced on me. And, um, I remember people calling me Jewish, but as a negative term. And I think that's why it took me so long to return to Judaism, because Judaism was also always associated as a bad thing um, by neighbors, by colleagues. Like for instance, if I'm if you're torturing someone, they say you're do estás a fazer judiarias, which means like Jewish things, literally. Um, for instance, if you uh, are stubborn, they call you marin which can mean pork, but it can also mean stubborn, um, uh, like someone who uh, bumps their head, but it's also a name used for Jews, um, like also uh, other terms, like um, if you are, uh, you know, um, Someone, I don't like to spend money. I'm really, uh, you know, uh, they call you Semitica, which it means literally Semite, but it can be used to refer to someone who is um, um, not willing to spend their money, uh, who is selfish with money, stuff like that. Other terms like... Um, um, I just remi remembered it. Like, Portuguese language and European languages in general are so full of anti-Semitic... Oh, Ladino. Ladin means... But this one is not necessarily ba bad, but it means smart in kind of a, a cunning way, sneaky way. Um, um, so it can be bad. Um, but it can also have a neutral uh, intention behind it. So there's a lot of uh, anti-Semitic language in the Portuguese language. Specifically to me, because I rejected Jesus and they tried to exorcise me twice. Uh, I, I was always... Anti-Semitic terms were always used against me. So it's a bit... Um, of a situation in terms of 
connecting with Judaism. And don't get me wrong, I knew that I was Jewish in terms of heritage because um, I knew the story of my city. I kind of knew the story of uh, family stories. Uh, not exactly that we were like, it's, it's complicated. I knew there was Jewish in us, but I didn't necessarily knew how much Jewish we had. Um, I did go to school. I, I visited the synagogue a lot. Um, there's a lot of things that are really involved with this. Um, because you can know that you have Jewish origins but you don't know how much of it actually impacts you in the present. And also how so many people in this region forgot about their Jewish roots because uh, we had a situation, we, we had a dictatorship, we had a Fatima o hoax, that's made a lot of people become devout Catholics, but still we preserved a lot of Jewish things. Uh, so it's really amazing. And um, so we do have Jewish surnames, but of course, in terms of having Jewish surnames, it doesn't really mean a thing because in Portugal, lots of por Portuguese people have Jewish heritage. Uh, we do have so much mixture and it's really hard to tell who is of Neanisim and who is a descendant of conversos who converted willingly or has Jewish heritage but you know it's really complicated because there are two sides you have the Neanisim those who were forced to convert which are the people who are more likely to pervert preserve Jewish habits and those who converted willingly uh, which are likely to have Jewish origins but have no habits that can be tied to Judaism whatsoever and so it's a really complicated path and uh, so um, going back to the beginning uh, I became an atheist agnostic for many years I went back and forth. I studied Islam, Judaism, Kabbalah, alchemy, a lot of things and I think whatever I did pushed me more towards Judaism. There were things that are hard to explain but I don't want to go into mystical things but it kind of feels like my soul was always pushed towards Judaism. For instance, um, I have lived throughout my life in three different Jewish neighborhoods without knowing it. Former Judiarias without knowing it. And it's incredible. In Coimbra, I leave, lived in three places that were associated with Jews without even knowing it. One of them, I was literally in front of a former synagogue that was conferred, com converted into a chapel and then into a philo house. And it is said that the mikveh may have been underneath my house. Then I met someone, that person tried to talk me into, you know, um, not being an atheist. There were several things, and somehow I returned to Hashem. Um, the thing is, I, I struggled with accepting whether I was being honest about my conversion and things like that, because it's really hard to go from rejecting God and being agnostic or atheist, because I was going back and forth. And then going back into being with Hashem. So that was a really shocking process to me. Um, and then 
when I I decided to convert, uh, I knew I had Jewish ancestry, but I didn't know how much, and it it didn't even come to my mind because like, hello, everyone here has Jewish heritage. Uh, not everyone is Jewish just because we have Jewish ancestry. Uh, so I started looking into conversion and I contacted several organizations, which is hard in Portugal to get a conversion. And then I talked to Chave Israel. Um, they wanted me to move to Belmont, but at first, they rejected me. Actually, at first they rejected me. And then I wanted to become more observant. And I talked about going kosher. Hang on. Okay, I should do this. Because I hate the noise it makes for the camera. So, um, Rabbi... Um, talked to me and he said, you know, you're not Jewish yet. You don't have to go kosher or keep Shabbat, but you can do it. But there is no need for it. You're not even converting yet. Um, and uh, you're not Jewish. And he was trying to dissuade me. So I kept in touch and I went kosher. I started eat, keeping kosher and when I started keeping kosher and keeping Shabbat and doing things I realized there were things I was doing that my grandmother did and that that really you know a light bulb like kind of hey my grandmother was doing that so I talked to someone that I no longer talked to and he said, because at the time I, I really uh, had, I, it hadn't caught on to me. Um, and I said, I told him, hey, my grandmother was doing Jewish things. I remember this and that and that and that and that. And he said, you know what? You're in touch with that rabbi. Why don't you tell him? Uh, dad, because I think you're of Neon and Sim. And um, I knew I had heard something about crypto Jews when I was studying Kabbalah, but I never connected the dots because there's a thing when you're inside of a family that does things, like for instance, me checking eggs for blood is something natural to me that I assumed everyone does, but no one else does it. And then I told to other people and people think you're crazy. Um, but there are these things that within your family, everyone does it. So it's normal. So it's really hard for you to know whether you're a Neonacy or not, because those things that to you are normal, don't exist in the normal population. And it's not like you can go to your neighbor and say, hey, will you monitor me for a day in my house? And if I do odd things, can you tell me which things I do are odd? Because, you know, it's second nature to you. And so you don't really notice these things until you connect the dots, um, which is what I did. Then I talked to the rabbi, which had, you know, he didn't want to convert me at the time. And then when I talked to him, uh, he changed abruptly. I had just set, told about it. And then he said, you know what? I'm going to call you. And he called me. And he asked about the certain things, habits, and there were specific habits that um, do not exist in current, uh, 
you know, that are from rabbinical Judaism, because there are things that Anasim do, do that Allahic Jews do not do, and things that Allahic Jews no longer do, and uh, I'm saying the same thing, and things that Allahic Jews do that Anasim lost. So it's really inter interesting that we preserve things that are already lost to Allahic Jews. Um, but I talked to him and he said, hey, you know what, you are, um, you, he didn't just want to convert me, he wants to, the entire family, because he says, you're Jewish, you need to return, and you need to bring your family back. Your family can benefit from it. So he was insisting and insisting on me to bring my family back which at the time I took it as a bit a bit badly because my family doesn't want to return. Well, my grandma was open to it, but still, um, it was an interesting shift. And there are, there are lots of things that um, prove uh, that I am of Neonosim, lots of habits, and I had to remove them from my channel because... Um, there's a, a group of uh, non-Jews and non anusim that are appropriating our heritage and I want to protect our heritage so that people from the outside don't exploit it and don't make it harder for real Neanusim to return. Uh, so then uh, the rabbi sent me a book and he said, you know, You've said a few things, most of them are in this book. Maybe you should read this book. And he, um, it's a PDF from his organization. And uh, it turns out I had all, almost all things. And I had a few things that weren't in the book, uh, which I had talked to him. So it was really, really interesting. And the thing is, the things are not necessarily like they say in the book, like for instance, when they talk about um, uh, certain habits, like you don't do certain things in Judaism that are not allowed, but for instance, uh, in, um, in fact, they, they are not allowed, but in terms of uh, of uh, Christian life, uh, or um, you know, for Anansim, you kind of get the superstitions like, oh, it protects you from witches, stuff like that. But when you get to the bottom of it, it's a superstition that is uh, typically. Um, you know, Jewish, which is, is kind of interesting that our minds try to rationalize things. Um, one particularly interesting one was when I made uh, challah for the first time. And um, when I, I, because as a kid, I used to bake bread with my grandma. And there was this thing that she'd take a piece of dough and she'd burn it. And I asked her why she did that and she didn't know. She said, ah, maybe it's for to try if uh, it's hot enough. Um, if it burns, then it's hot enough. And, you know, she re it's something that it's not a quite thing because when we baked... Uh, cakes she never did that but when we like um she took a bit of dough but when we baked um like uh what do you how to explain um you know that um Uh, I don't know how to explain, uh, but there's a, like, um, it's not a cake, 
it's kind of like a pizza. Like when we did like kind of a pizza thing, it's not a cake. It's like, it's hard to explain. I don't know the name of it, the thing. She didn't take dough out. She didn't need to do that. Uh, but again, there are things. It's like some things were forbidden to do because it could give away our Jewishness. Which is actually rare in my family. There's very few of those things that we're forbidden to do uh, that Jews did. Uh, but these things can happen. So it's really interesting. So now I'm writing an essay about it to a new York. Okay. Hi. And I'm sorry, my cat. Okay. Let me fix this better. Because my cat is laying next to my blue ring light. And okay. I don't want to. Okay, I think it's going to stay now, if she doesn't move. So, yeah, um, there are several signs of Anusin that you um, may not be aware of. And uh, so, okay, I'm drinking like this. And so when you do um, end up researching your family, there, there are several things that can indicate Jewish ancestry. And it's really hard to know which, where, which way to look. And it's really fascinating because I wasn't aware of those things like I knew we did them but I didn't know that um, they indicated that we are Jewish in origin so it's actually an interesting thing and uh, I'm really happy because now I'm working with an organization and I am being assigned a new rabbi going to progress a little more but at the same time I'm really sad that these people are appropriating our heritage and our struggle when there are so many good people trying to help us and they're using our heritage to attack Allahic Jews and it's it's not okay uh, if you're really Jewish, you shouldn't talk Orthodox Judaism, I mean. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. If you, it's like, if you're Jewish and you don't keep the mitzvot, it's, it's bad, but you're still Jewish. But if you're a convert and you don't want to convert to Orthodox, then you're not really a convert because... As a non-Jew, you're rejecting the the commandments even before being bound by it. So necessarily, your conversion isn't, you know, alachic because you're not accepting all the mitzvot. Uh, Jews are born into it. They really don't have a choice. But like, um, yeah. If you want to convert, you need to accept the law. Like, for instance, a citizen of a, a nation doesn't necessarily to choose to, to be born into that nation. Um, and yes, he should abide by the rules and do things appropriately, but it's not the same thing as a foreigner who wants to become part of it. Okay, now I did it. I really need to adjust the tripod. Uh, okay. 
so, um, it's really sad that now they're using Ethiopian Jews, they are using all sorts of Jewish groups to demonize Allahic Jews. And at first they were going only against Ashkenazi Jews, but now they're really de demonizing Sephardic Jews, and they're saying Sephardic Jews are oppressing whatever minorities. And it's ridiculous, because they say, hey, I have Sephardic sounding names, so I'm Ibni Anusim, I'm a crypto Jew. That's not how it works. You're not a Sephardic Jew or in the Anasin just because you have a surname that was adopted commonly by um, conversos uh, and uh, you know because the thing is many um, sadly many did convert willingly which is not a common occurrence throughout history, but many did. And those are most likely to not have kept Jewish habits because they willingly abandoned them. Whereas Anusim are those of us that kept them because they were trying to resist Christianity. And so there is a difference between Anusim and those that converted willingly, even though a lot of people don't understand the difference. However, whatever Jewish DNA you may have, whatever Jewish surname you have, doesn't mean a thing if you don't have all that background. For instance, my grandma's family has a bad reputation due to the Jewish heritage because for instance, even my granddad, my great-granddad, her father, um, didn't, uh, he didn't change her surname per se, he just um, didn't uh, give her the surname Hatu, because Hatu is a common surname associated with uh, Jewish families. And it still has a negative connotation. Like, my family and my cousins still have the, the reputation of being Hatash. And it's a bad reputation. They don't know why. We're clean. We, we have hygiene. We have normal lives. But we're still known as filthy and a lot of things that are negative, even though... Since my grandma's generation, we no longer have that surname. It still haunts us. So it's 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 a bit um, complicated, more complicated than that. You you just just because you have Jewish ancestry, it doesn't mean that you're Abnea Nusim. Abnea Nusim is really has a lot of factors into it. You have not just the names, you may even not have the names, but it's a certain behaviors within the family, certain, um, you know, there are certain telltale tales. For instance, I have a perfectly sounding name that could be used by both Sephardic Neonacin Sephardic Jews and Portuguese Goyim. What made the difference was when I talked to my rabbi at the time um, and told him, hey, I went kosher. I noticed this, this, and that. I also noticed that and that. And so he started asking questions. And he wanted to convert the entire family because he said he realized the entire family has Jewish origins. So it was no longer just about me. It was about the, the entire family because he said that we don't even know if we are Allahic Jews. Because there's a, a small chance 
that I have an unbroken maternal line because there are things that my grandmother does that are passed down from mother to daughter, not necessarily from father to daughter. So the likelihood of an unbroken maternal lineage is very high in certain situations. So you can see it's not just, hey, I read about crypto Jews, I identify as a crypto Jew, I want to be accepted as a crypto Jew. It's not like this. Typically, there are signs that you're crypto Jewish. You can't just say, hey, I don't believe in this and that, and so I'm a crypto Jew because I have so and so name. It's not like that. Typically, your family will have kept some Jewish habits. So, you know, some halaha, even though they're, even though, like, for instance, they may keep a certain aspect of kosher and completely do the other things because some, in order to hide that they're Jewish, would actually eat pork just so that the Inquisition wouldn't persecute them. So there are certain factors that actually can that would normally be used to disprove that you have Jewish heritage, that can also be used to prove that you have Jewish heritage. But typically, those need to, they're an ensemble, per se. So, you typically, when one family has a Jewish habit, they have several Jewish habits that you can tell for sure that that person is at Neanderthal. It's not just a random thing. It's not like, hey, I want to be accepted. I want to be Jewish. But hey, they're not accepting me as a convert. So I'm going to be uh, whatever. That's not how it works. I was talking to my rabbi. I went kosher. And I made some observations. The rabbi asks a few questions. He asked the, sad, the most absurd things that make no sense to you in your family. And I told several things that he said. There was actually one thing that he had to ask another rabbi. Um, and it was actually a sign of crypto-Judaism. And those of you who saw my past videos know what it is. But I'm not going to talk about it in this video now because of the culturally appropriating uh, converts that are trying to uh, hijack uh, our situation because there are organizations that are helping us but there to me it's one thing to help real Bnei another one is to help people impersonate us so I'm not going to tell my experience Unless you are Jewish and you're a friend, you can, you know, talk to me and I will say things. But if you're not Jewish, I'm not going to say my experience and what I was told by uh, the rabbi because it can help other people impersonate us and I'm not going to help them do that. Because these are things that are intimate to me, they're intimate to my family, and I don't want to, to, people to use it to pass off as one of us. So what I'm doing is essentially, if you're Jewish, if you're Orthodox Jewish, I will tell you. If you're my friend, I will tell you what those signs were, uh, if I can converse with you. Um, I will tell you that. But if I don't know you, I'm sorry, I cannot tell you that because some people are using that to delegitimize Sephardic Jews, Allahic Ashkenazi and Allahic Sephardic Jews and making it a race war. And because I don't want my heritage to be used against Sephardic Jews and Ashkenazi Jews, I removed my videos and I apologize in advance, but I cannot give any more clues 
about what it is like to be a Vnyanusim, perhaps these things will subside and I will re-upload those videos. But at the moment, I had to take them down because there's a growing movement of uh, Gen Z kids, um, you know, those uh, that have pronouns in their uh, profiles. And you, I think you know the kind of person I'm talking about that are anti-Zionist, they are anti-everything but decency. And uh, they're trying to appropriate every Jewish movement possible as a way to attack Judaism. So I'm not contributing to it. That's why I removed my videos and I wanted to make one that was a bit more um, less clear. And I think I let too much information into this one because there's already a, a few things they could pick to 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 fool a rabbi per se so i don't know i just hope i didn't give away too much in this one um and that's it for this video and if you're um jewish uh, allahically i have no problem discussing this um issue with you i'm just uh removing my information just to avoid um, that anti-Semitic people like Anna Rajog Rajogopal and others use it uh, to appropriate our heritage uh, in their quest to abolish uh, Orthodox Judaism and attack the chief rabbinate. So uh, that's it for this video and I'm going back to cybersecurity, so I'm really excited. There's a lot of exciting things going on in my life right now. And so I will we'll probably be uploading a bit more. I'm hoping to get a new computer so that I can take the cybersecurity course. So I'll probably have better quality of image, uh, video editing, hopefully, and uh, stuff like that. So that's it for this video, bye. And if you see those, um, anti-Semites on Twitter, please DM me their tweets or um, send me their messages, stuff like that, because I really want to be aware of what's being said about Neonacin, because I kind of am protecting uh, this community, because they're being, there are messianics trying to use us, there's all sorts of mu movements trying to use us, so I'm kind of protective to those of us that are still vulnerable and still have no information and still have no help. So I really want to provide help to these people that still haven't found their way and still don't have the information that they need. So, yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm really thirsty. So that's it for this video. <laughs> Please comment, subscribe, you know, uh, ring the little bell thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's it for this video. Bye.